In terms of sheer impact, no martial arts can claim to have had a bigger influence on our modern understanding of fighting than Jiu-Jitsu. Having taken the wood of MMA by storm, this practice is now a primordial part of the sport, forcing its athletes to develop their ability to move on the mats as well as on their feet, at the risk of getting ragrolled in a pure ground match. While most combatants still choose to specialize in either striking or grappling, it is undeniable that being a well-rounded pugilist has become unavoidable for those who wish to claim the title of strongest in the realm of mixed martial arts. By way of consequence, it comes off as no surprise to see the same phenomenon being replicated in shonen storylines, such as Grappler Baki or Kengen Ashura, with the art of Jiu-Jitsu being given the credit and spotlight it deserves. This isn't necessarily true for Baki, which focuses mainly on the display of classical jujitsu, also known as jujutsu, a fighting skill whose techniques are performed standing up and concentrate mainly around joint locks and throws. I will not be explaining the differences between Brazilian jujitsu and its ancestors, but just know that the lines between those different branches of the art are blurry, as their masters did not limit themselves to one method or another. They seek to develop their own style over time, making it so that each grappling school would further specialize with each new generation of students it mentored. If you are interested in the history of the sport, check out the links in the description for a great documentary on the topic. It is ironic that a story named Grappler Baki would almost entirely ignore the facet of the discipline that takes place off the feet, while rarely making use of the rest. Sure, there are some occurrences of pseudo ground fights, but overall, the focus is clearly on striking skills, especially in later arcs, which might explain why Itagaki scrapped that theme from his series title. Paradoxically, Kengen Ashura does a much better job at including Jujitsu in its fighting sequences, and this is why the video will focus entirely on this fighting manga, as it offers a faithful and almost hyper realistic depiction of the sport of grappling when Baki tends to be more spectacular and less precise. This isn't to say that Kengen doesn't also take some liberties with the laws of physics, but the modulations of human limitations as pertaining to fighting techniques is less severe, making for a more accurate representation of grappling moves. The martial elements surrounding the narrative depiction of the art are multiple, with the ability of a smaller and weaker man to defeat a bigger and stronger opponent being one of the first. This trope is carried throughout the story by Imai Cosmo, a grappling genius whose abilities and physique will receive a Morso Manga episode of their own. His trademark submission is the Python Hold, a type of rear neck choke that he often sets up by entering the zone, a special headspace that allows him to boost his reflexes by focusing intently on the opponent's movements, before catching them in his death grasp. As someone who weighs 68 kilograms and who has to compete against Morso freaks, his fighting power hinges entirely on the effectiveness of his moves, that guarantee him the victory as soon as they are secured, which is an important aspect of jujitsu that the non-initiated struggle to grasp, often calling the sport soft and ill-adapted to an actual struggle to the death. If an opponent takes your back and has you in a choke, this is game over. Once you're out, they can just stomp your face into the ground, or better yet, squeeze the life out of you by extending the duration of the hold until you just die of asphyxiation. That inevitability is presented as the main reason why Jiu-Jitsu, and grappling in general, is so important to learn as a mixed martial artist. Let's look at a double leg takedown. It is possible to defend against that move, but if you don't know what you're doing or get blitzed, you're going down. Not only will you take damage from the fall, but you're now on your back without the ability to summon kinetic energy from the floor into your hips to deliver blows. You got two choices now. You either escape and get up, or you grapple. And there is no martial art out there better at defending from the guard than Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, not even by a mile. You can be the best striker in the wood. If you get put on your back by a high-level grappler, you're toast. This is the equivalent of getting tossed in the high sea when you don't know how to swim. I don't care how long you can dog paddle, you're eventually going to drown. But if you're an efficient swimmer, there's a chance that you might make it to shore. Once you're on the floor, 
the dance begins. It's an endless reversal between attack and defense that requires an immense amount of flexibility and strength as well as a bottomless reserve of stamina, something that anyone who's ever been to a wrestling or rolling practice can attest to. Unlike Baki, which focuses on the end result of such a contest by displaying submissions as spectacles, Kengen Ashura is more intent on presenting the step-by-step -step process of a grappling match, often with painstaking precisions. The way bodies move during the roll and the subtle motions of the legs as they propel the torso around in a quest towards securing a dominant position and passing the opponent's guard are all replicated faithfully, giving the impression of a step-by-step -step breakdown of the fight. The combatants aren't playing around, and as explained previously, every submission hold can lead to defeat. The Kengen tournament only forbids weapons, and maiming or killing is authorized, if not encouraged. And while it isn't rare for a competitor to continue fighting way past his limits, as the referees are not allowed to step in to stop the fight, unless a fighter taps out or is unconscious, this doesn't make a broken bone or a snapped tendon any less threatening. A completed armbar means that you're now fighting with only one arm, and the author has made sure to demonstrate how punishing such a disadvantage can be. As such, the fighters are all the more eager to not get caught in one. The brutal aspect of jujitsu is given justice here, with each panel perfectly underlining how dynamic and ruthless the sport of grappling can be, especially when wielded by gigantic bodybuilder frames. In doing so, the manga avoids the stereotypical pitfall of summing up jujitsu to a game of technique and skills. You just have to look at the now widespread use of steroids in the sport to realize that muscles play an important role in grappling. And while knowing how to move and how to execute submissions and defend is of course quintessential, the advantage that superior strength can play cannot be overlooked. In a sense, it wouldn't be wrong to say that strong muscles are more crucial for grappling than they are for striking as the action of tugging and pulling on an opponent's limbs to put them into a hold is going to be aided by resistance training, much more than the ability to throw a punch. That distinction is made clear by the author, who presents the practices as two completely different entities. Grappling is not a subdivision of striking, and vice versa. Those are two separate endeavors, making them also the perfect complement to one another. It isn't to say that the sport is summed up as two meatheads trying to tear each other's head off, or that the finesse and technicity of the art can only be showcased when a pure grappler pins his moves against an unskilled opponent that greatly outmatches him in size. While fights like Okubo vs. the Fang of Mitsudo display the raw power and stamina necessary to grapple for extended periods of time, there are many other demonstrations of jujitsu prowess in the story that focus more on agility and speed. In these instances, the transitions from feet to floor are almost too fast for the eye to follow, and an attempted choke can turn into a leg lock in the blink of an eye. Having become a staple of modern MMA, especially in no-gi environments, the prominence of heel hooks in the professional circuit is explained by how destructive and unforgiving such a submission can be when used on an opponent that doesn't know how to defend against them. This is exactly how they are introduced in Kengan, which goes to show the level of knowledge and respect that its author has for Jujitsu. There is a strong emphasis put on highlighting the minute details that make the art such a complex pursuit, with some panels zooming in to show how the characters clasp their hands during certain moves in order to secure a lock, or which part of their body has to be in contact with the floor to initiate motion and get to the correct position to obtain a submission. The immediacy with which one has to answer to these spatial modifications to avoid getting tapped out are made evident by the audience's reaction, and the dynamic effort produced by the would-be choked to put up a guard and create some distance, demonstrated here by a twist of the torso and the positioning of a knee to push against the opposing force and correct the hip angle. Jujitsu isn't as static as it seems, an aspect that is rendered perfectly here with the fighters moving all over the place and constantly switching stances and guards. This is grappling, the practice of defeating an opponent without resorting to blows. It exists on a completely different plane than other martial arts, with Jiu-Jitsu representing the pinnacle of that mindset. 
While it isn't as painful as striking when it comes to physical damage received, the art of defending with your back against the floor or submitting an enemy without standing up demands a high amount of physical fitness and mental strength. And the demands it puts on the cardiovascular system can be summed up in one word. Excruciating. Englobing all of that, there is combat, with the goal of emerging victorious, no matter the price or method. And in that word, developing the ability to take the fight to the ground and removing flukes from the equation might be the smartest possible choice to make for sheer effectiveness. With wrestling, judo, and especially jujitsu, there is no such thing as a lucky shot. You either master the situation and win, or you don't. The price to pay to tame that fate is simple. It'll take you hundreds of hours of work to develop your technique, and about just as many gallons of sweat and exertion to make your body efficient at it. But once the price has been paid, the gods of grappling will smile down on you. This is the message that Kengen Ashra conveys in its love letter to Jiu-Jitsu.